Jessie Draper, the Valley Girl. Valley Girl. What does your company do? Have you ever Googled yourself? Totally. What makes a great entrepreneur? What's your next big idea? Tweeting's like my favorite. Let's talk business. I'm like the Valley Girl. Silicon Valley native Jameis McNiven is a well-known Bay Area restaurateur. Many of the biggest deals in technology have been done at his restaurant Bucks of Woodside. Hey Jameis, how are you doing today? It's great. It's another great day in Silicon Valley. It is, isn't it? And I'm so I'm so excited to be here. This is honestly the happiest place on earth to me. <laughs> it really You've is. You've never been to Disneyland. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, it's like a playground for me. It uh, is. Uh, it, it, it's Friday morning, and this is Thursday and Friday are sort of deal days. This is when the venture community comes in here, and uh, I was just sitting with a group, a bunch of people from Germany, Switzerland, and they're all talking about international events, uh, nanotechnology. I'm, so there's a bunch of power lunches, power breakfasts here. What is like a power lunch? Do you bring your weapons and... You know, that's so funny. Years ago, a Japanese TV crew came in here, and, and usually they speak pretty good English. There were five of them, and they, had, they they said, oh, power breakfast, power breakfast. They said, you want some food? Oh, yeah, power breakfast. So they brought we brought out all the food, and they photographed it, and they looked at it. No one ate anything, and they packed it all up, and they gave me the keychain, and they left. And I go, what was that? Oh, and they sort of thought the food had some talismanic quality. <laughs> sitting, sitting next to them was Bob Cagle, who put up the money for eBay, and he was just having an English muffin. He was looking over like, whatever, you know. <laughs> so you're probably the 200-something TV crew we've had in here in the last well, few years. Well, thank you for we having us. them on the wall. Well, and you're the most important. Is one. that your favorite power lunch story, do you think? The Japanese tourists coming. Well, in. you know, we see so many things. We see, we see the business folks. We, right. A lot of things happen here that we don't see because they're just in their inception. Like uh, Steve Jurvetson sat down here with Sabir Bahatia in uh, in the late '90s, and Sabir had this profound idea. He thought free email, and that's how they launched Hotmail. Just the two of them sitting over here. Sitting in bucks. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so many firms have like Tesla. Uh, Netscape, uh, PayPal all started with just a couple of people talking about it. And then later, people came here to sort of have There's their... There's so much history here. Well, it's really Well, there incredible. is. And, and, and people came to have their firm sort of anointed here. So it became <laughs> a thing, and they'd come to sign here. And, uh, and, and this, of course, I see all these business plans, and I'm thinking, no, oh, that's interesting, that's interesting. But my business is all about uh, selling happiness and then people pay me before they leave the room and they leave something extra, which is kind of a custom. I mean, that to me is a business plan. <laughs> <laughs> that is a pretty great business, I have to say. Now, why is it called Bucks? Bucks. There's a lot of stories about that, all of which I've made up. Some people say I named it after <laughs> money. That wouldn't be inappropriate. I'll tell you the truth, though. I was going to name bucks. this. I was going to name this. You have some $2 this, bucks yeah, right that's there. That's right. I was going to name the. Uh, our, our corporate name is Two Bucks Inc. because we used to use a lot of two dollar bills. But um, I wanted to call the place Buffalo Dicks after this old cowboy, and my wife said that's not going to happen. So I shortened Buffalo Dicks to Bucks. Oh. So the insiders know us as Buff Dicks. Buff yeah, Dicks. Yeah, yeah. Buff Dicks. This might work in Denver. I don't know if it would work in Woodside so well. <laughs> so funny. And so. Now, where do you get all of this amazing stuff? There, well, I, this is I could our just 37th restaurant. We have 30, 36 others, and so we manufacture all this stuff in Minnesota. Oh my it's gosh, all, yeah. you have 36 other restaurants. Uh, no, I made that completely up. Oh, okay. Yeah, all this stuff is one of a kind. <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, I collect it all. Uh, people give me things. Uh, I build a lot of it. I'm an artist. Yeah, now tell me about your space suit. You have a space suit over there? I do there? have a, a cosmonaut suit. I tried to get one from NASA, and they, they weren't having it. Oh, we're going to take those to the Smithsonian. They're very precious. And Russia. They, they well, sell me the I don't Kremlin. know why they didn't want one in Bucks. Well, uh, I, I had to go to Russia to get the space suit. I had met the previous year. You had to go to Russia to get the space Yeah, suit? but I'd met the head of the Russian army here when Bill Perry, the Secretary of State, brought him in. Oh, my god. And he gosh. gave me his card. He said, you're in Russia. You look me up. Uh, and uh, then I went to Russia. I had his car. And we got hooked up with this spacesuit manufacturing company in Russia, and we shook the general's card at them, and they said, "Come on in!" And they sold us a spacesuit. 
That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, well, those cars, you know, those we, cars, got it's a, a powerful we car. even got arrested in Russia. But when I whipped out the general's car, I said, call my host. They go, ah, let us go. <laughs> yeah. um, I grew up coming here, and I have so many fun memories, so many fun things around here. What is your favorite um, piece of art? Well, I'll tell you, my favorite, I do have a favorite piece, and that is a sawfish shark snout, which I'll show you in a few minutes when we go over there. You know, I've heard you've talked about the future of the internet. What do you think the future of the internet is right now? Oh, well, the internet's over. Uh, the next thing <laughs> is, truly, the, inter the internet we're leaving behind okay. as, it's like the personal computer. Who right. talks about the personal computer anymore? No. The internet is now just going to be like, the wallpaper or the human skeleton or whatever, it's disappearing and we're, we're going into the next realm. Is For the last couple of years, I've been thinking the robots are gonna be taking over. Now I realize the robots aren't gonna be taking over, we're going to become the robots. No. We're becoming the robots, we're sure. We're gonna become the robots? We are becoming the robots and it's happening, and it's happened without us even seeing it. For instance, this new program on the Apple 4S is oh, phenomenal yeah. and it's it's just, it's it's the semantic web made real. And the amazing wow. thing is, except for Steve Jobs, most of the founders of this are still alive, still here, and still vibrant. Now, you wrote a book. I did write a book. Tell everybody what your book's about. It's my autobiography. It's just a big pack of lies, like everybody's <laughs> autobiography, but there, but you don't know which ones. Uh, you know, you some, don't know which ones I, are real. I've, I've, I've incorporated some strange truth in there. I talk about all the way from zygote to, to about eight years ago. And I'm working on a new book now, but um, you know, I talk about stuff like my relationship with Steve Jobs. I was standing with Steve when his girlfriend came up on the front porch and said John Lennon had been killed and Steve burst into tears. Steve idolized Lennon, idolized the Beatles beyond anyone else, named it Apple Computer after Apple Records, agreed to not, that. and they said, that's okay, he asked them, if you don't go in the music business. Of course, he ended up in the music business, and that's why the Beatles catalog wasn't on iTunes for, for a yeah, long time until recently. Yeah, they yeah, cause, but they came to an agreement. So you went from, when did you start Bucks? 21 years ago. 21 years yeah. ago, and what was the initial thought that made you decide to you know, start this great Well, place? I was building the bakery next door, and I used to build restaurants for a living. I built things like the Hard Rock in the city and, and a lot of bigger restaurants, and I thought, I could run a restaurant, and and so my wife and I uh, bought this tumble-down place over here called the Stagecoach, and it was all white walls with nothing in it, and we just, we had no idea what we were doing. We were selling fried green tomatoes and stuff. Nobody wanted, and it took us a few months and then a few years, and finally, you know, we made uh, a little money, and and uh, then the internet happened, and boom. <laughs> so uh, I remember the first mention in the press of Bucks was Bob Medcalf in February 14th, 1992, he, he came up with Ethernet, and he was the founders of 3Com, great guy, and he uh, said he was having a power breakfast at Bucks. I thought, wow, there's our name in print in InfoWeek. Yeah. And then in, uh, John Doerr was mentioned a couple years later. And What do you think have... it is that draws the people here to do business deals? Well, here? it's comfortable. We're next to Sand Hill Road. Sand Hill Road is the epicenter for the venture capital community in the world, which is the center of the new technology, which is is really everything about American growth and, and, and the power of creativity. And so it's focused here. And, I and love Woodside. Sand Hill Road. I know. It's wouldn't? just like the center of energy. I know. And you go over there, people come from out of town, they go, this? Where are the monuments? Where are the, <laughs> where are the big signs? Where's the hoopla? Where are the restaurants? Well, here, you know. There are a couple restaurants on Sand Hill, or there's more, than, but there's two hidden ones a lot of people don't know about. Really? They're open to the public, but they're deep into the buildings, and they're, oh. and they're, and they're fun, and they're fine. I go over there to get away. You know. <laughs> <laughs> to get away from your awesome place? I, I know, would never I want know. to leave. Yeah. It's so fun. Um, so, now, I was talking to you a minute ago about, you know, fun dinner table tricks, and I was thinking we should try and hang these on our noses. Uh, there, there must be there must be more to it than this. Uh, don't you just want to sing though when you have one? I yeah. can't no, I get no kicks from champagne. <laughs> Please go on. Uh, mere alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. 
But I get a kick out of you. There is a use for a spoon. Plus, I'm upside it. down. Yeah. Is, I really can't do this. No, I, they, I think people use super glue or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's a lie. We'll have to work on this. Back so to college. <laughs> <laughs> so can you make any um, napkin art? I'll use the dirtier napkin. I work for a living. What do you think? I just goof around all day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. All right. I goof around all day. Do you? So I don't even know. Do you know how no, to make I... any napkin art? Let's make a hat. Let's make a hat? Yeah, we're going to make a hat. OK. Is... I don't know how to make a hat, but we're going to. All right. Yeah, these are, <laughs> these are real nice. These are real nice. This is actually what I do for a living, too. You know, when I was a kid, I, I, I visualized that I'd grow up and I'd just wander through toy stores and I'd meet interesting people and I'd make tons of money for not doing anything and be on television a lot. How's kind it going? worked out pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually better than I imagined. They're, they pay me more than, than, I, than I'm worth, you know. Well, it sounds like you just, you know, you just live life to the fullest. It's, it's a really a gift yeah. to be able to do that. Yeah. What is your secret to, you know, living so happily? I make my family do all the work, uh, and uh, they think I'm driving back and forth between all the restaurants, and I'm over there, but really I'm just driving around listening to the radio. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's all about kids and dogs, and uh, I spend a lot of time by myself uh, at home in my studio building art projects. Uh, not for here, this place is kind of full, but for our other restaurants and for the Humane Society I built this big doggy diner had recently and delivered it and uh, big so you giant made a lot of cats. It. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. So yeah. you must have a story just about every single Well thing. I know every every inch of the place, sure. Everything has a story. This is a fun piece. This is Windows 1.0 in the wow. it wasn't even called 1.0. It's in the shrink wrap. And here's a letter like from me. here's a letter from Steve Ballmer from 1985. Said we worked out all the bugs. It's ready to ship. And he's Should be the no problem. CEO of Microsoft. Microsoft, right? right yeah. So uh, this was uh, announced in '83, slipped in '84, shipped in '85, finished never. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret to their success: never finish. I love it. Serious. <laughs> it's like uh, this is a great piece up here. This is an automobile they made for children in the 19 teens. It, Cost two hundred dollars though, and a Model T cost three hundred, so it really didn't sell very well. There's only fifteen of these left. This is one of them. Uh, th there's my Zeppelin. I built this model of the Macon Can you here. Build that? Yeah, um, yeah. I build a lot of the stuff. I'll show you this sawfish shark snap. This is the chandelier room. So a lot of the stuff is is crazy and whimsical, but a lot of it's serious too. This is a sawfish shark snout my grandfather bought from Jack London's widow. And oh Jack London God. collected this in the early 1900s in the South Seas when he went on his fabled voyage. It depicts a trading trip these islanders did. And so this is the real deal here. And so that clearly be my favorite piece. That's really cool. Right, yeah, it's from the mid 1800s. Well, when these Russian generals visited, uh, I took a picture of him. Here's his business card. <laughs> and, and then later, I, uh, well, actually, no, this was before. This got me interested in Russia. I offered to buy Lenin's body and sent this whimsical letter saying I'd like to buy it for display at Bucks. Oh and they God. wrote me back saying we couldn't possibly sell it. But what do you mean by six figures? So they were kind of a little bit, they kept the door open just a little bit. <laughs> That's amazing, you almost bought one. Well, I was, body. I'd buy it, yeah, sure. Who wouldn't? Oh. Well, I was thinking I would add this to a little something somewhere. Uh, Buck the Buffalo over the bar. Well, Jameis, I thought I'd leave my mark at Bucks. Oh, I think fantastic. I think she'll look lovely. As if she already didn't look good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
Yeah. Don't you think it adds just a little something? Well, you know, this is the original. The one in New York is this a is copy. The this is the original Statue of Liberty, and the people of France gave this to me. If I promise to leave, it's my French girlfriend. The original Statue of Liberty, right here. <laughs> Well, Jameis, this was so fun having you on the show, and thank you so, so much for, you know, letting us come visit Bucks. I'm like the Valley Girl. And I'm like Jameis McNiven. Yay, that was fun. Okay. <laughs>